This video is possible thanks to contributions to the Existence University Patreon by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello fellow human beings. Today I am asking for a moment of your time to discuss a serious issue which has taken over your world. First let me start by reminding you that you exist, that you exist as a human being, and that you only really have one moral choice, the choice to think or not. To think or to evade thinking, those are your only options. That being said, let us get started. Topic 1. Us versus Them All of the world's greatest tragedies have been caused by an us versus them idea. It does not matter where or when. Pick a time in human history and you will find death caused by this us versus them. This idea of us versus them comes from a type of tribal thinking called collectivism. It is only collectivism that can cause this kind of death sentence. Throughout human history, including the present day, for the most part, both sides of the us versus them war had collectivists on both sides. But I am here to tell you that there is no them, and the us is just individual humans. You cannot have a proper them. It is impossible. Every single human being is different, with different thoughts and opinions, and the best you can do is to ignore all the reasons that they are an us so that you can force them into being a them. In this regard, there is no left versus right. There is no pro-vax versus anti-vax. But there is only individualism versus collectivism. An individualist is one that believes that all humans have equal human rights by the nature that the others are humans. An individualist cannot divide people into groups in order to prejudge them, as they know that any group they lump people into will fall apart if you attempt to judge people based on that group identity you created for them. For example, an individualist cannot be racist, as they can create a group called black people or white people, but they cannot use that skin color grouping to determine anything about the individuals in the group, because they know that they are individuals. The individualist knows that groupings are only superficial, that they only encapsulate one trait or attribute or feature of the members of that group, and are not the end-all of that group. A collectivist is one that believes that all human beings can be predictably grouped together such that by knowing one's collective, one can know everything they need to know about the others. Collectivists think that they can divide people into different groups, and can then use that grouping to determine the personalities of the members in that group. A collectivist can be, and usually is, a racist, as they believe that they can group people into black people and white people, and based on that grouping, believe that they can know everything about that group. Whether that is a collectivist with socialist views, that believes that all white people are racist because of the color of their skin, or whether that collectivist is a religious person that believes that all black people are criminals because of the color of their skin in relation to the religious figure him. One of those collectivists may vote Democrat, the other may vote Conservative, but they are both collectivists, and hence they both have an us versus them ideology where they package deal the other's ideas with their political party of choice creating a left versus right ideology. Together, the collectivists share this new ideology of stupid them versus smart us. Individualists that vote Democrat and individualists that vote Republican do not see others as them. They know that they cannot judge the other based solely on the group they vote for. Every single human being is an individual, and any self-identification or any identification forced upon them is merely a conceptual way of identifying only a tiny fraction of that person. Therefore, it does not matter what us versus them groups you study. You will find that there are rational thinking people on both sides, and there are irrational unthinking people on both sides. If you were to dig into the groups, you'd see that every single us and them is in fact made up of individualists, 
versus collectivists. When we divide people into groups, we are grouping them based on something the members of that group share, and so we can divide people into these two groups based on the idea that individualists share an idea, as do the collectivists. You cannot say the same about other us-versus-them groupings. You cannot say that everyone in the left or the right share an idea. That is not true, because of the individualists on both sides. However, we can divide people into individualist versus collectivist, as the individualist on both sides will say the same thing. Namely, they will say, We cannot judge others based on a single group that they belong to. We have to know the whole person to know that person, and knowing that one person doesn't grant us knowledge of the other people in that group. Whereas, the collectivists on both sides of an us-versus-them war will always say the same thing as well. They will say, We can judge others based on a single group that they belong to. We don't have to know the whole person to know that person, and knowing one person grants us the knowledge of the other people in that group. All of the greatest achievements in the world have come from individuals standing up for their lives and using their minds. All of the greatest tragedies in the world have come from collectivists forcing down the lives of the unclean others for the greater good of the us. As of today, stop looking at the world as left versus right. This skin color versus that skin color. This religion versus that religion versus that secularism versus this secularism. Every single time you accidentally think us versus them, I want you to think about dividing those us's and those them's into smaller groups until you see that there are going to be them's that could be us's and us's that could be them's. Then you will begin to see that the only differences are between those that want human rights for all and those that want special privileges for them and genocide for the rest. To be an individual starts by thinking for oneself. Topic 2. Logic and Contradictions In the war between collectivists and the individualists, there is a battle for information. The collectivists do not care about facts. Facts are outside the realm of the collective. If your ideology depends on being able to judge others based on the group the collective puts others into, such as race, then they also need to ignore the reality of genetics, and that there are no races besides the human race, that twins can have different skin colors, and therefore, dividing based on skin color becomes absurd. Facts only matter to an individualist as that is the only way in which an individualist can know and judge reality and people. One does not need to be a scientist or expert in a field to judge facts in reality. One merely needs Aristotle's laws of thought. 1. The law of identity. Whatever is, is. Or, for all A, A is A. 2. The law of non-contradiction. Nothing can both be and not be. 3. The law of the excluded middle. Everything must either be or not be. Using these three laws will allow you to find contradictions in the work of others, if there are any to find. Let's take vaccines as an example. The law of identity. A vaccine is, quote, a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against one or several diseases prepared from the causal agent of a disease, its products, or the synthetic substitute treated to act as an antigen without inducing the disease. The purpose of creating vaccines is to give individuals a chance to give their immune system a sample of a causative agent of a disease such that the individual will be protected in the future when they encounter the causative agent naturally in the wild world. The purpose of taking a vaccine is to protect yourself from the natural causal agent of the disease which other people may have. The Law of Non-Contradiction Nothing can both be and not be. 
If someone tells you that everyone needs a vaccine in order for their vaccine to work, that person is saying that a vaccine is not protection for an individual. This would mean that a vaccine is both a way for an individual to gain an immune system protection from causative agents of a disease, and is not a way for an individual to gain an immune system protection from a causative agent of a disease. This argument contains a logical contradiction, having vaccines both be and not be at the same time. The Law of the Excluded Middle Everything must either be or not be. The above argument that everyone must be vaccinated for vaccines to work is a contradiction as we have just seen, so then it must also fail the law of the excluded middle. If everything must either be or not be, and a vaccine is said to both be protective for individuals and not be protective for individuals, then it is not a thing which either is or isn't, but is a thing which falls in the middle where nothing can be. One does not need to be an expert in immune systems or virology in order to see the contradiction of forcing something to both be and not be at the same time. From the anti-logic of this nature, vaccines can be whatever you want them to be, which would violate the law of identity. A vaccine is a vaccine. To say that a vaccine can be a vaccine, and also a vaccine can be not a vaccine at the same time, is to violate reality. And no expertise is required to dismiss that argument. Based on those three laws, we can form a logical dichotomy. A is A. A vaccine is a vaccine. Every vaccine has the same purpose, which either works or it doesn't. 1. If the vaccine works to protect individuals from a causal agent of a disease, then there is no reason for said individual to fear the unvaccinated or the vaccinated. 2. If vaccines don't work to protect individuals from a causative agent of a disease, then getting one will not prevent you from getting or spreading the illness from or to the other vaccinated or unvaccinated people alike. Topic 3. Medical Privacy Violations and Lost Perspectives The world you currently see around you is the result of the collectivists in their death throes. This is their last-ditch Hail Mary attempt to divide the world into groups which they can judge as good or evil based on which groups they decided to divide the individuals into. Those that are vaccinated versus those that are not vaccinated. But just as in all groups, as we discussed earlier, these two groups, created by the media hysteria, can further be divided into two groups inside each. Individualists versus collectivists. There are those that are vaccinated and encourage people to get vaccinated, but are opposed to mandating a medical procedure or lockdown or garment to be worn on a human being because individuals have to make their own choices. And if the vaccine works, why should they fear their neighbor? That person is the individualist. And there are those that are vaccinated and see those that oppose vaccines and those that oppose mandating vaccines as the other the them, and that because of this otherism, they need to be removed from society because they are dangerous. That person is the collectivist. On the other side, we have those that oppose these, or all vaccines, for whatever reason, and encourage others not to get vaccines, but do not wish to mandate a ban on vaccines, and will not stop an individual that believes vaccines are right for them. That person is an individualist. And there are those opposite thinkers which oppose these or all vaccines and see those that have or want the vaccine as a single group of thems, and each member of that them group must therefore all think and act alike. Those are the collectivists. Given that you can divide the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated group into individualists and collectivists, you can also see that three out of the four groups oppose mandating vaccines, and only a quarter want to force vaccinations and vaccine passports on human beings. That quarter would not be bound to the laws of thought. They don't believe in facts. Facts to them are subjective and based on consensus. The typical response you could expect from them is, what peer-reviewed paper do you have to back that up? You will see that response not just to scientific claims to which that response might be appropriate, 
but also to non-scientific claims to which one should not expect a scientific paper to be produced. For example, from my own experience, in writing a comment on a YouTube video which was from a year ago, I wrote that a segment about the Wuhan lab did not age well. Another commenter responded, where is your peer-reviewed paper to prove that? That is not the gotcha question the commenter might think it is. What would the scientific hypothesis even be in that case? This evidence would be found in political and corporate business dealings. The evidence would be presented in political chambers, not in scientific peer-reviewed papers. What are they saying by asking this question? They are saying that they do not trust their own minds to make decisions based on evidence for and against a case. They cannot form judgments from facts, as they have to ignore certain facts in order to remain a collectivist, and must therefore release their general care for facts. They need a scientist to tell them what science is, and they will follow it. Whatever that means, whatever that means. This escape from facts has caused people to lose track of where we came from and where we are going. We are in Willy Wonka's tunnel, so to speak. This has led us from the idea that the illness is not a danger to most people, but is more dangerous to those with a compromised immune system, and so we should make an effort, like six-foot distances, to flatten the curve of hospitalizations of those that have weak immune systems, to masking, to forcing masking, and shutting down businesses, which only makes life harder for those with a weak immune system and cannot get to the store like healthy people can to vaccinating everyone, including the immunocompromised, to mandating or wanting to mandate them. The vaccinating of immunocompromised individuals and pregnant women was something we were trying to avoid at the beginning, because those individuals should never get a vaccine. By slowing the natural spread and flattening the curve, we were planning on gaining natural herd immunity, meaning those with healthy bodies that can take on the natural virus can handle a natural fact of life without dying. Once all of those that are healthy have been exposed to the illness, we were not likely to spread it again if we were to catch it again, thus preventing spreading to the few who cannot handle the natural or prepared versions of the virus. Suddenly, natural herd immunity was never a thing, tossed in the 1984 memory hole, and now it's evil to be an other, a them, an anti-vaxxer, Having the literal definition of anti-vaxxer, which shouldn't be a word in the first place, it's an anti-concept, changed to those that oppose mandating mass vaccination campaigns. Now, immunocompromised individuals and pregnant women are no longer recommended to not get the vaccine, they are encouraged to get the vaccine, flipping history and science on its head. Last time this happened, children were born without limbs. Let us consider one of those means by which they are forcing collectivism on everyone and examine the future implications. Mandating vaccines and vaccine passports and mandating proof of vaccine exemptions. That quarter of non-thinkers pushing for mandatory vaccines or at least mandatory proof of vaccine exemption in order to buy groceries from the store or watch a movie in theaters or to go to a ball game have created the groups The Vaccinated versus the unvaccinated, and they have gerrymandered the boundaries too. This is the mind of a collectivist, which exists unknown to the collectivist himself, but is the psychoepistemological automation he runs on. The vaccinated are those that run and operate the stores, and the unvaccinated are those that are unclean and must be exiled from society. You own a store but don't wish to be one of us? Then you are not allowed to open your doors. If you oppose mandating your customers, you are by definition now an anti-vaxxer and must be exiled for wrongthink. You want to be in society? You must become one of the collective, with the same thoughts as everyone in the collective. Thoughts handed down to us by the scientists, like Bill Gates, Anthony Fauci, and Bill Nye. Scientists, like the inventor of the PCR test, doesn't believe in the science, and doesn't believe in mandating vaccines, and therefore we are contesting that the Nobel Prize winner for creating the PCR test even ever invented it. Because he is one of them. The inventor of the mRNA vaccine says not to take the vaccine, and therefore he too is not the true inventor of the vaccine. He is a them. This kind of thinking, or non-thinking, 
has led us to the point where the world's current political discussions revolve around vaccine passports to exist in society and to not be an other exiled from society. Now I want you to consider this one situation. Imagine that all of the unvaccinated, which includes all anti-vaxxers, which includes all those who are in fact vaccinated but oppose mandating vaccines, are exiled from society. In fact, they left peacefully to start a new society where they don't have to show their papers to anyone and can live as free individuals, such that all that is left in the current society are those vaccinated individuals that believe in forcing vaccines and vaccine passports. This can be achieved either politically through force or socially by private business. In this society, we have a few things to consider. What happens if someone is immunocompromised and cannot get the new vaccine? Well, that person may go to the doctor and receive an exemption. Now, this person who has just received this medical exemption wants to go to the store to buy food. The store owner mandated vaccines for all of her employees as to be protected from the unvaccinated and has mandated that all of her customers provide proof of vaccination or vaccination exemption. We hit that contradiction from earlier. If the vaccines work and you get your employees vaccinated as to protect them from the unvaccinated, why then do you need to reject unvaccinated customers from the store to which all the employees are safe from the unvaccinated? Blank out. In order to prevent the unvaccinated from entering the store, the business owner is going to need to pay an employee to sit at the door and be exposed to every single customer that wishes to enter, therefore exposing one of their customers that eats lunch with the others to be exposed to the unvaccinated people that he needs to turn away or accept their exemptions. Here we hit another contradiction. If exposing your employees to the unvaccinated is dangerous for all the employees, what happens if the employee at the door is exposed to an infected, unvaccinated person? If the vaccines work, nothing. And then why guard the door? If they don't work, then the doorman must also be treated as unvaccinated and excluded from coming into the store he works for. The individuals that are too ill from non-contagious diseases to get the vaccine and have to get the exemption now line up outside in the freezing cold or scorching heat as this doorman has to decide if their medical illness qualifies for entry into the store. If he is not allowed into the store because he is exposed to them, how can he allow them into the store? If he is allowed into the store because being exposed to them is meaningless for his and his co-worker's health, then why should he even look at the passports and exemptions? And how can he, a minimum wage employee, be expected to judge the truth as to whether the third stage cancer patient is lying to him or not? Meanwhile, you have a lineup of chronically ill human beings being forced to explain to every single store's doorman how terrible their life is compared to those in the fast lane with their vaccine passports. There will have to be two lines, as it would defeat the purpose to have the unvaccinated infect the vaccinated just before entering the store. One line will have those that could have handled the natural virus, with their vaccine passports easy to check and easily identifiable as a member of the collective. All young and healthy, in a line that speeds through quickly. And another line for those with exemptions. A line for the old, crippled, disabled, or otherwise usually in chronic pain, standing in the slow lane where exemptions need to be questioned as these are the dangerous people that may be lying to you, and so examinations of these people must be slower and done more contemptuously, a contempt which only increases over time to the doorman as he is also forced to be outside and made to be like one of them by having to be near them. This will be the result even in a society where those that reject mandating the vaccines leave to start their own society. Now imagine the reality that will come when the doorman is face to face with a crowd of people that reject his and his business's ideology. A large percentage of non-white people are not vaccinated for various individual, social, and religious reasons. Before this illness madness took over, we were hearing from groups like Black Lives Matter that there is systemic racism in the West, and that the majority of corporations are owned and operated and supported by white supremacists. Suddenly, a large percentage of non-white people are no longer allowed to shop at Whole Foods 
because Karen swooped up that job of rejecting people she hates based on their other isms. Those that accept a job, such as a doorman to prevent the unclean them from entering, will no doubt have the kind of ideology that allows them to reject human beings as individuals for the collective's sake. These will be the kind of people who get to decide which exemptions and passports they believe and which ones they say are fake. These are the results of the collectivists. Thank you for your time. If you would like to support Existence University, you can visit us at our Patreon at patreon.com slash youexist. Or you can now go to the Existence University website at existenceuniversity.com. Future products will be coming to the market, but in the meantime, you can contribute to Existence University at existenceuniversity.com through our donate page. Or you can buy our products. Check back often as the store will be updating over time.